long time since I found an episode that really, really drives my patience. But before we get into that, there's something I have to explain something. But not It's just more personal reason, but not like any big secret. But um, there may be a chance that I might not be... God, I don't even know how to explain it. I just, okay. Basically, I had a talk with my uh, orthop my dentist not too long ago, and essentially, you see how I smile? You see how, like, my teeth are, like, kind of, like, up to, like, they're not, like, my top and bottom teeth are, like, not meeting? Well, essentially, I've been told that I have to undergo surgery and wear braces for two years just to get my teeth like, straightened out. And the thing is, I have not thought about my smile. I just thought I liked myself the way that I did. And I thought that by using Invisalign would be a way to get out of undergoing surgery because I have never done it before. And just being told that, like, oh, well, if you don't do it, there's going to be grinding, teeth chattering, all that jazz essentially means that I, like, they say it's okay if you don't close, but they're telling me that, oh, if you don't do this, then your teeth are going to be ruined for the rest of your life. It's like, you're not giving me a choice. So, I have, like, at this point, all I'm thinking right now is I have zero desire to get braces, zero desire to undergo surgery, straighten my teeth, like, I don't give a fuck. Like, seriously, I'm not going to go and just force myself to push my teeth back without undergoing three, eight. Like, at this point, I'm just going to just be like and tell them, like, you know what? I don't trust you anymore, okay? You can say whatever you want about my teeth. I do not trust you anymore. I will promise you nothing because... I have zero desire to go under any form of surgery. I don't want to change the way that I eat. And now at this point, it's like I'm madder now, like, talking about it. Like, having slept on it for a few days, I'm okay. But now that I've been thinking about it, I'm just more fucking pissed now. So, this is the perfect excuse now to talk about our next episode, which is honestly an episode that, number one, I don't think anyone really talks about. Oh, number two, nobody else considers it a bad episode outside of the cartoon hero. And number three, rewatching it again just reignited my hatred for this episode. And this is a Daring Do episode. And this might be seen to be a theme of this episode because I feel like ever since hence the second Daring Do episode, Daring Don't, it seems like I feel like the Daring Do episodes are not very good in my eyes. I mean, Stranger Than Fan Fiction is debatable, but as I said, I personally am not a fan of that episode. But then there's episodes like this that make me rethink, maybe Stranger Than Fan Fiction wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Let's just get into it and just go over the stupidity. This is Daring Done. So this episode begins in Ponyville as we see Pinkie Pie and, and Rainbow Dash basically reading the newspaper and reading some articles, but, di but Rainbow Dash then freaks out when she hears the news. So, yeah, so basically the news report states that Yay K. Yearling is announcing retirement, and after the theme song, Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie basically go to Yay K. Yearling's cottage, who we know is Daring Do, to figure out what is going on and why she's retiring out of the blue. Like that. So you're just quitting and moving away? What? 
She is right, because that newspaper doesn't really explain anything. Like, you're just, that's just like announcing, like, you're just basically retiring out of the blue after just two years of working. Like, that doesn't make any sense. But A.K. Yearling then basically explains the situation as as to why she's retiring out of the blue. Wait a The reason that Daring Do is now quitting adventuring and, by extension, writing is because some of her recent ex in travels has caused some destruction in the bit of the destruction around the areas that she had traveled to. And I get where this episode is going from, where if you are a hero, you are responsible for your actions in, and and having to worry about collateral damage and how other people may perceive you when it doesn't seem like you care about collateral damage. So, first strike against this episode is that I've seen this episode done before. This has been done in the DC and especially in the MCU countless times. I didn't like it when they did it there and I certainly don't like it here. But we're about to get to the meat and potatoes of it, but Let's just keep going. Yeah, so basically, like I said, essentially this moral is the whole, basically the hero does more harm than good, and all of a sudden the heroes are now considered villains, even though they do everything in their power to make sure that the civilians are safe in a much greater evil. As I said, I didn't like it when the MCU did it, I don't like it when DC does it, I didn't like it in that stupid two-parter in that one Transformers Generation 1 two-parter, and I certainly don't like it here. And I guess it's a good thing you look so different as AK Yearling. So essentially, Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie want to go to Southern Equestria to help out AK Yearling to clear Daring Jew's name. And now we get to our next band of stupid, where essentially the villagers are all so easy to believe that Ed Daring Do is the new, new bad guy. Okay, well, okay, well, the priceless statue, I would see kind of a major thing, but I think the apple stand is the least of your worries, and... It's Cavaleron. I honestly really could care less that I'm spoiling it, but it's Cavaleron. I mean, if you've seen the episode, you see how thinly failed, vague the disguise that Cavaleron is. Essentially, it's just basically a Jedi trench coat and a scarf, essentially. And yet, it seems that this one guy is essentially the main reason that all the villagers all of a sudden are being like, Okay, Darren Jew is evil now. Because of what this guy has said. And that leads me to the next problem in this episode. The villagers are incompetent morons. Like I said, this is another example why I hate this trend in the examples I listed earlier. Because all the civilians are so easily led to believe that the heroes that have protected them time and time again, because of one little incident out of the blue, all of a sudden the public eye views them as villains. 
And now that I'm thinking about it, there's one episode in SWAT Cat's Radical Squadron I hated hit that trope there as well. But let's keep going and continue on the band of stupid. Yeah, like I said, the villagers basically agree with what Cavalon, Cavaleron is saying, and they're all sheep at this point. Maybe it wasn't because of that. Maybe it's just because that the villagers are all morons. Okay, so think a bad example. One of them who you should have recognized sounded like Cavaleron. Considering that Pinky and Rainbow Dash have seen Cavaleron, how could they not think for one second that this asshole who out of the blue comes out of nowhere and says, oh, Darren Jew is evil because she did this, this, and this. It doesn't matter. I never should have come with you. You two should just go home. Never... So they try to find another example, and they go to basically a hotel to talk to a pony that actually knows Darren Do. Rainbow Dash and Pinky try to basically clear things up with the hotel pony to talk about Daring Do. So she's an incom so she's a moron and she's rude as well. That's what I probably would have told her by now. Oh. No, no, no. You got it all wrong. <laughs> How do you think? Daring Do was trying to save every pony from the curse of the dual diadem of Nikati. And she was only in a rush because she had to get the ground back to the TR of the Opalay before the curse took effect. So, yes. So, obviously, that is a sound, legit, reasonable argument that Rainbow Dash is bringing up to up to this hotel pony, and what does she say? Sounds like a tall tale to me. A tall tale to you. How? Explain to me how? How is that a tall tale? Because if you're this hell-bent on thinking that she's automatically a villain, did you not think for one second that she was essentially trying to save your ass from a much greater evil that's probably playing you like a fiddle? Wait, not probably, is playing you like a fiddle. And you do not think for one second that she has seen Cavaleron. And not think to myself, hmm, this isn't accurate at all. No, she just easily believes that, oh, Darren Dude's all of a sudden evil, and any logic that you bring to this, it doesn't matter. I would have told her this by now. Shut up! I'm telling you, she's the killer! That little bitch is definitely the killer! You are a moron. The fact that... Let's just 
keep going because I feel like that if I don't stop myself from using every clip to basically point out every single plot hole that these contrived dumbasses bring in this episode, I feel like I'm going to be recording yet another 45 minute review explaining why this episode sucks. But these examples are kind of leading to the point as to why this episode drives my patience. So essentially, they find A.K. Yearling, and they sit down to overhear Cavaleron's bullshit reasoning as to why Daring Do is evil. And they are all sheep. The villagers are sheep because they are so easily led to believe, but we'll get more into that a little bit later. At this point, if I was in the... You know what? Fuck it. I haven't used this clip in a long time, but fuck it. Hey, Leon, do you object to anything that Cavaleron just said about Daring Do? Do I object? Hell yes, I object. Of course I do. I object, I object, I object. I mean, all of this is just a bunch of stupid theories. You need evidence. Where's the evidence? Without evidence, it's all bullshit. It's bullshit, and I refuse to acknowledge it. That's the least of our worries right now. So essentially, Rainbow Dash wants to help out A.K. Yearling, and while she still thinks it's a good, bad idea, Rainbow Dash wants to go and try to stick up for Daring Do. Here it is! The remains of your, I mean, our somnambulous... And you notice how he says your. And the ponies don't think for one second, hey, this isn't accurate in any way. Again, I probably would have just been full on just feel like caught that and just be like... Oh, come on. Anyone else smell a rat or is it just me? Oh, never mind. You guys are morons. Me yeah. Because that's exactly what they are. They are morons. Is that true? Now that Derry has destroyed it, tell me, where will we hang our glow pads? We don't even have any glow pads because they were stolen by Derry Do. They easily believe one thing, and all of a sudden they proclaim that Daring Do is the biggest his villain since Nightmare Moon. pretty much being the frustration of the audience at this point, basically decides to stick up from Daring Do, and we get to the point that I was bringing earlier of how these guys are sheep. It was because she was trying to save you all from Ali Dodo! As I said, just by that one sentence, the villagers now all of a sudden, hmm, that actually makes kind of sense. These guys are sheep. Everybody, they do not know who Aoi Zodal is. Let's keep going. You guys are sheep. And that, and especially since I played Tales of the Abyss and I saw what happened to Xeri Youth going down into the cliff off, that's what it would have been like. But when Rainbow Dash splits up and basically calls all the statues stupid or something, I don't know, basically the apple cart pony basically then tells us a legend about the statues. You must understand us. You must first understand her. Who? This is another legend called Cinebula, where this is another legend, kind of like Rock Hook, Mist Mane, and Flash, not Flash Cinch. Essentially, this is sort of resemblance of the Prince of Egypt, and we do get some nice holes. So, this is all nice world building, and while the story is interesting, 
The problem is, is that the story is being told by a bunch of idiots who are so easily led that you could tell them one thing, you could easily just go on and basically tell them like, Hey everybody, childbirth is bad! And they'll just be like, BOO! But then you can eat, but genocide is good! They could, they will literally believe anything. And I understand that there are people like that in this world, and I understand that this is a kid show, but here's the big thing. There's a suspension of disbelief, and then there's a suspension of just not giving a shit. It is literally frustrating how, while the, it, again, it is nice world building, I'm listening, listening to a story by a bunch of characters who are a bunch of idiots who are so easily led to believe in literally anything. Okay, then you know what? Uh, do, then you know what, dickweed? Okay, hearing you talk like that just pisses me off even more. You know what your problem is, Nagisa? You've got no respect for how hard this is for everyone who isn't you. Yeah, because it's literally like these villagers only care about themselves and not think for one second that Daring Do was essentially trying to save their asses. They're all nothing but ungrateful sheep. Let's get to the really, really stupid part. Uh, if Sanabila were here today, she would condemn Derry Do for destroying you, our symbol of hope. Uh. At this point, I don't even know what language this guy's speaking. It's excuse after excuse after excuse. He's using every excuse in the book of dumb excuses. Yeah, and it's literally like Cavaleron is finding the hint of idiocy that these pretty much that's what they are because they are so easily led and to believe this one guy out of nowhere, they just easily believe him. So after Daring Jew runs away, Cavaleron reveals himself Oh, and explains his evil plan. The way to think about what I want to do to Cavaleron. Dimitri, if you could be so kind to list me a couple of ways I want to do to Cavaleron right at this moment if I was in this situation while he was gloating. And now we get to the really, really, really stupid part, where Rainbow Dash gets captured. She literally does nothing. She does not try to fight back. She does not try to, try to stand up to these goons who she did fight before in Stranger Than Fan Fiction and all of the previous Daring Do episodes. She literally gets herself captured. the least I want to do right now. So, essentially, so, basically, AK Yearling and Pinky overhears that Rainbow Dash gets captured as they basically try to run onto the pyramid to try and save her. So basically, thanks to Pinky's encouragement, Darren Dew gets her fighting spirit back and goes into the cave, which looks like acid. Well, 
you know what, dickweed? Need this was a stupid plan on your part. So you know what, Cavalera? I hate him. I hate him. Fuck! There's five minutes left. Let's do this. Like honestly, after seeing all the stupidity, while the action scene is definitely very fun and adventurous, it's not at all satisfying considering how we have to deal with a bunch of idiots who don't know anything. Where we then cut back to the village where essentially we see how no one suspects why there is a giant bag that's being carried out by Dr. Cavaleron as Daring Dew catches him in the act and, oh, they end up getting caught. That's not even the stupidest part. <laughs> so then that is a very stupid plan. So you basically require how you would have to require the incompetence of every villagers and literally every villager you've gone to with just one pep talk. You easily told everybody to be like, oh, Daring Do is a villain, by the way, because she destroyed everything. This is a very stupid plan because how can not one person think for one second, well, Daring Do did this for us, and while, yes, she did cause collateral damage, she was also trying to save our lives. This is the stupidest plan that Cavaleron has done. Well, I believe in her more than I believe you, douchebag. Well, that was your own stupid... Just want to forget it. I really could care less that the villagers are cheering because with what we've seen from them this entire episode, they have proven time and time again they are sheep. What are they doing? I'm working with with idiots. That's essentially what it is. I would, if honestly, at that point, I would have been like, you know what? Well, you could cheer for me all you want. It amazes me how you morons were able to believe this asshole so wholeheartedly. So, up yours, jackasses. All right, let's, let's, let's skip to the frickin' moral of the episode. I beg to differ. Like I said, I I understand this is the moral the episode's trying to go with, but this cliche is frustrating for me to watch because it's like, it's these cliches like this where it's like everybody that has seen the heroes protect them time and time again, and in just one episode, one movie, whatever, all of a sudden, the public eye automatically sees them as villains. You know, I think I will. Oh, and, and even the icing on top of this cake, we see Daring Do help rebuild the village. Which leads me to believe that she literally did everything else in all the other villages where Cavaleron had smeared her name. So that was Daring Done. I don't 
care for this one. I'm sorry. This episode's bad. It's really, really, really bad. Honestly, it really drives my patience with this episode. Now, I understand, like I said, I understand what the moral is trying to do. Is that you do need to take responsibilities for your actions even when you're trying to do the right thing. But there is literally not one thing in this episode that made me think this was legitimately good. There were so many moments in this episode where I was just frustrated from the stupidity of the villagers. And when you really think about this episode and break down Cavalleron's plan, it is really, really stupid. It, it really amazes me how the villagers were so easy to believe everything that one douchebag is saying about this person. And they are so easily swayed when you can bring in a legitimate argument. And it's because of this idiocy, and what frustrates me is that they basically force D Rainbow Dash of all ponies to become the damsel in distress all of a sudden that infuriates me. And as much as this episode drives my patience, there's still one episode that I think is worse, but I may have to look deeper into it, but honestly, Darren Dunn, I think it might be a contender for the worst episode of Season 7. Even worse than All Bottled Up. It is that bad. Why nobody else considers this to be a bad episode and not think for one second how frustratingly stupid this is, is beyond me. <sighs> so with that, Daring Dunn gets a D-. minus. It only escapes being an F because of the fact that the world building on the Saphir story is interesting if you ignore the fact that it's being told by a bunch of idiots who are so easily swayed. Hey, that world building is the only reason why this episode does not get an F. But Daring Dunn is a D minus. <sighs> I had a lot of things to vent about today. And kind of a good thing, too, because I actually got in the mental health day, and hopefully now I can vent on anything else that I need to get done. So next time, hopefully we will be taking a look at an episode that really, that isn't infuriate me. Alright, so next time we will be looking at, it isn't the main thing about you. Hopefully this, this next episode will be better than this piece of shit. See you guys next time. Bye.